Well, good morning. Good morning. morning. Would you stand with us? Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for your wonderful blessings and all the benefits and favor that you offer us, God, being children of you. We thank you for um, continued favor on our lives, and and, um, we just thank you for all that you're going to do. In your name we pray. Amen.
get some space. Kids, can you help me out with this one? You guys ready? All right, here we go. Are you ready to get up? Here we go, ready? <clears throat> oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, come on. Get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. of God. Oh, he's so good. Yes, he is. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father. Oh, yes. Oh, he's so good. Oh, he's so good. Oh, yes. So get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that green. Thank you. 
lives within me. Christ who lives within me. From beginning to the end, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Yes. It's no longer I. Cause all your promises are yes and amen. 
and I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Don't be overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, yes. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, you leave the 99 years. Oh. So shadow. And you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. Oh, yes. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. Oh, yes. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. Sing it out, yes. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me, oh yes. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me, oh. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me, oh yes. There's no a good, good daddy. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, you hunt us down. Oh, you hunted me down. Think about the love of Jesus just for you. Think about your story and your testimony. Because no one else has it. It's like the fingerprint that he gave you. No one else has the testimony that I have. No one else has the testimony that you have. So just take a second and think about it. Think about his goodness. Whether he found you in a church service or he found you in jail, he is a good, good daddy. He's a good, good father. Oh, yes. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, let's sing that bridge again. You ready? Cause there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Oh no, there's no wall you won't kick down, 
in the house if you're not already closing your eyes close your eyes don't look around don't worry about the person next to you as I was worship worshiping in that and and I know many of you as well something so beautiful presented itself to me as I was singing those words it chases me down it fights till I'm found church I drug that love through drug addiction. I drug that love through sin and shame, lying, unhealthy relationships, absolute disgust. I drug it through dirt, but it fought through that, chasing after me. And then picture this, the moment that I repented, what does repent mean? that I turned away from my sin the moment that I repented that love that had been chasing me down was standing right there arms wide open having been drugged through the mud and the dirt and the sin but still as beautiful as ever right there arms wide open arms wide open arms wide open I didn't earn it I didn't deserve it but that love was just so freely given. It chased me down. It chased you down. It fought through the dirt and the grime and the sin 
to present something so beautiful that we could never, ever achieve on our own. Now, eyes closed, rest in that for a moment. Just thank God. Thank God. Thank for the thank God. Thank you for the miracle of my salvation. The miracle that I am standing here right now alive. The fact that I am even alive. The fact that I'm watching my little girl worship this morning. Because God felt some amazing reason to keep me alive. make your way back. I want you to just find somebody and love on them. Love on them with a love that you know that you could not ever have if it wasn't for the beauty of the love of Jesus Christ. such an exciting, exciting day today. If your feet didn't hit the ground this morning like it was Christmas morning, well then let me be the one to introduce you to this is, this is like Christmas for us, church. Not only do we get to worship the creator of all creation, not only do we get to just praise and worship freely but then we get to feast on the word well one person's going to feast on the word one person is going to feast on the word this morning come on we get to feast on the word do not get all methodist in me on, on me in here come on do we serve a creator of all things do we serve the king of all glory are we purchased with the price that could have never been paid <laughs> outside of the love and sacrifice of Jesus Christ amen all right so Christmas Merry Christmas guys Merry Christmas all right I feel like I got to like you know you know, come downstairs, turn on the lights, see the Christmas tree and the presents under it. Feel like I got to, I got to kind of like turn on the lights for you guys. It's Christmas. All right. All right. Yes. All right. I'll get excited. Three of us will get excited. Amen. All right. Y'all ready back there? Good. Good morning, Grace Church family. Good it's morning. wonderful to be in the house this morning. You know, better is one day in the house than a thousand elsewhere. Uh -huh. So somebody might be visiting us for the first time. Yep. So Grace family, you know what to do. You know, we'd also like to extend a welcome to those of you who are watching online. Wish you could be here in person. You know, watching the picture of a fireplace does not give you the warmth, if you know what I mean. All right, but we're glad you're here nonetheless. Hey, and today is Missions Sunday, and guys, you know the drill for that. We give $1 per person in the household for each week of the month. Great, so, and that's just a starting point. That's so right. If the that's Lord's right. encouraging you to give more, throw a little extra on that check. Yep, yep, yep. It returns a hundredfold. All right. You want to talk about what's going on oh, in the back today? Oh, 
Yeah. Hey, today we are having Christmas lunch after service back in the fellowship hall. Um, the cost is seven dollars. And Grandpa, what's on the oh, menu? Oh, it sounds like we've got open face roast beef sandwich, mashed potatoes, corn, vegetables, <laughs> pie, tea, and lemonade. So join us back there for just an incredible, wonderful Christmas meal and the fellowship that goes along All with right. it. All right. Sounds like a party to me. And the teens are having their Christmas party. Teens, listen up. December 17th at the Sizemore's oh, house. Oh, that sounds like All a right. fun time. Teens, be there or be square. Yeah, you know, us old yeah, folks. Yeah, you know so. that. Uh, kids Christmas program December 18th an opportunity to invite grandma and grandpa aunts and uncles and mm, you know those people that are CEOs if you know what that means but get them in here because the kids make them smile. That's right. December 18th for the kids program. Yeah, yeah. And um, when, you know, and if you were a first time or when you came in today, you would have gotten a uh, welcome packet and then there is a uh, first timer's prayer request card. Um, and uh, we want you to fill that out and turn that into the offering basket or give it to one of the ushers. And we begin praying over that today. Actually, we began praying this morning at 8.30 because we gather for prayer Sunday mornings at 8.30 and Mondays mornings at 8. So make sure you turn that in. And if you're like a tech-savvy kind of person... Right. On the back of the seats, there are these QR, QR codes, codes. You so just you scan can those. scan those and upload Incredible. a prayer request and hook up with the Grace Church of the Valley and good. all kind of good stuff. And if you got any questions, you know, ask the ushers or the people that greeted you when you come in this morning. We'd be happy to take care of those. And remember, there's no Wednesday classes until January. That's right around the corner. But use this time as, you know, focus on the promises and celebrating this time of year. Invite some folks that need to hear about the promises. And uh, we've got some invite cards out in the uh, vestibule about the promise. Um, give those out because this is a difficult time of the year for so many people. Right. Last week we heard about the promise of hope. Today we will hear about the, the promise of peace. And to come is joy, love, and most importantly about Jesus, that's the promises right, that's of right. Jesus. So make sure you get some of those and uh, give Hand those them out to people. They need to hear about it. Good. All right. That's about it for today. I think so. We call you blessed. Hey, we'll see you after service back in the yeah, fellowship Yeah, get back there and some enjoy some yummy food. Yummy Christmas lunch and great fellowship. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, good. I'm glad they got this mic hot, hot, because I'm wondering, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys watch the video announcements and then it's all sudden like, where's my popcorn? Where's my big cushy pillow and my sweatpants? 
see, I want right now, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. So now, you guys are not just sitting all comfortable and ready to get all quiet for what's coming up next, right? Okay, so now that you're all standing, I want you to greet the person next to you and say, hey, I'm really happy you're here. Good. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay. So now I'm glad you're here. So now nobody should be asleep, right? Okay. You guys can have a seat. <laughs> a couple things I want to, I want to connect with you on, uh, the teen party at the Sizemore's man, they, they better get their house in order, huh? They better do some cleaning. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you young adults, you are also welcome. Young adults are also welcome at the, now, now there, there we get into a little bit of a gray area. I didn't say if you feel like a young adult, I didn't say if you feel like it. So if you are 30 and under, Now, now, you know how to, do you know how to circumvent, there's a good word for you, you know how to circumvent that whole 30 and under? Get a, well, that's one way. Well, that's, that's some 301 stuff, Mr. Jim. We're going to talk about that later. That's some 301 stuff. But right now, get your teen or your young adult into the house of God into a group that is going to encourage and uplift and get that, get that life right for the glory of God, right? There. And then guess who gets invited to the party? The parents of said teens, right? Okay, good. All right. So that's one thing. Another thing, how many of us are guilty and find ourselves saying, well, the political world has just gone to hell in a handbasket. There is no political individual worth redemption. Well, did you all just hear those video announcements? I want to be very clear. They were brought to you by the mayor of Aurora and his God-fearing wife. So do not just give that mountain up, folks. You understand? We have mountain climbers in here. We have some people who are ready to stake the flag of Jesus Christ in the top of those mountains, right? Amen. Amen. All right. So we are going to give. If you want to be a mountain climber, you better have joy when it's time to give. All right. So... If you did not get one of those purple packets, this may be your first or second time, and you did not get one of those purple packets, get one of those. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. Our amazing servants of God, these ushers, are going to get those in your hand. And we are going to give with joyful hearts, right? So as we're doing that, as you guys are preparing those, I want to uh, just mention what's going on after church today. Uh, I hear everybody say food. Well, yes, there is going to be some amazing, delicious food. But what? Whoa, somebody said it. What else is going to go on back there? Some fellowship. Some fellowship. Do not forsake the assembly, even if it's back in cafe, to have fellowship, right? So, Brother Dave, what do we talk about over the table as we're dining together? Well, I'm glad you asked because here's what I want to see. I want to see you adults tracking down some teenagers, and I want to see you fellowshipping with those teenagers, and I want you to ask them, hey, what would you guys talk about in teens today? Teenagers. Thought you were out of this one, didn't you? I want you to track down some adults, and I want you to ask them, hey, what would you guys learn about in the sanctuary today. And then adults and teenagers alike, I want you to track down some kids. And I want you to ask these kids, what did you guys talk about in kids church today?
Well, if it's going to be this silent back there in cafe, it's going to be real awkward. Okay, guys, get excited about this. This is how we progress the kingdom of God. We talk about it. We share about it. Practice back there. So that way, when you get into your office, you get into your workplace on Monday morning, it's real easy to talk about what you learned in service on Sunday, right? We got to be vocal, church. All right. So now we're going to be vocal with our giving. And this is Mission Sunday. Yes. Yes. Exciting. And we get to give. All right. So God, we come to you, Lord, with a joyful heart and a thankful heart. Thank you, God. Thank you for the greatest Christmas gift that we could have ever been given. Thank you for the Christmas gift that continues to give and give and give over day after day after day. We are the joyful, thankful recipients of life. And Lord, we are going to answer your call and we are going to share that life. We are going to spread the good news and we are going to disciple those that we are sharing your good news with. And we are going to do it for your glory and for your kingdom. And we give you all the praise and all the honor forever. In your name we pray. Amen. Come and give. Throwing things around? Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. For those that are visiting or new to Grace Church or watching by live stream, I am not Pastor Roger Webb. Not today, anyways. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Isaiah. Chapter number 9, verse number 6 and 7, and stand with me as we look into the Word of God. The prophet Isaiah writes, he says, For a child will be born unto us, a son will be given to us, and the governments will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And there will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness. From then on and forever. And the zeal of the Lord of the hosts will accomplish this. Amen. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather, to praise, to worship, to uplift and exalt your name. But Lord, now as we step into your word, as we look at the message that you have for us, Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom, give us direction. Most importantly, Lord, that you would give us the peace of your presence.
this morning. And Lord, I just pray that you would just encourage and bless each individual that is here and watching on live stream. Lord, that your name is being uplifted and exalted in their lives this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you um, as we continue to um, the Advent season. Last week, Pastor shared a great message on hope. But as we look at the Advent, it comes into focus under four different words. Hope, peace, joy, and love. The Christian church has traditionally seen these themes as the true gifts of Christmas, if you would. As last week, as Dr. Webb talked on hope, we discovered a man named Simeon who had faithfully waited for the arrival of the promised Savior. Some people believe that he had waited anywhere between 70 and 80 years to see this one child come. That's hope. That's hope. But Simeon also was looking for the peace that was coming with that child. Today we turn our attention to the second word of the Advent, peace. You know, the scripture is full of promises. And as we focus on the promise of peace today, throughout history, I mean, when you think about it, from Genesis 1-1 all the way up through the book of Revelation, God continues to make promises. He makes it to individuals. He makes it to nations. He makes it to governments. He makes it to everybody. God's made you a promise. Have you claimed your promise? The promise penned here by this prophet Isaiah in chapter 9 verse 7 or 6 excuse me. There is coming a ruler who will usher in a new government that will have no end. There will be a child, a son who will be born and they will call him counselor, mighty God, an everlasting father, prince of peace. Remember the prophet Isaiah is writing 700 years before Jesus comes on the scene. At the time that he, they are, Isaiah is writing, they are dealing, the Jewish nation is dealing with Babylon, Assyria, Syria, and a bunch of other countries that are trying to overrun them, take them over, and continually trying to conquer them. And in some cases, they win. But there's a promise that they are going to return to the place of King David. <laughs> but we find the promise fulfilled in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 12. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm like, Pastor, put yourself in this story for a minute. Okay? Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And in the same region, there were some shepherds staying in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which be to all people. For day in the city of David there has been born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger." The first individuals to hear about Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, was not the king in town. It was not the government. It was not this great um, person that would stand up and herald the outcome. It was to a group of shepherds. Now, here's the interesting thing about a group of shepherds. Number one, shepherds were social outcasts at this time. Okay? 
they cannot testify in a court of law of any kind, whether it's a religious court or a legal court. Their testimony was useless. They were dirty and they stunk. And this is who the Lord chose to tell first. Now, put yourself in this story. Let's get some spirituality going on here because I know that we're all that. When the angel of the Lord shone, it says they were frightened. They were terrified. Now, I know some of you are going, well, that's not me. Man, I've seen angels and they didn't terrify me. I would imagine they were doing CPR on each other. Because all of a sudden, you're sitting there in the dark of night with just a fire going, and all of a sudden, the sky lights up with all the brightness of God. Wow. Wow. And this angel, the Bible says, first of all, only one appeared because it says, and the angel of the Lord appeared. And I don't think that this guy was five foot six with, you know, a nice suit. I think he was big, and I think he was bright, and I think he had all the light of the world of Christ in him. And that's who's before them. And he has the audacity to say as he's standing there, don't be afraid. <laughs> right, whatever you say. <laughs> Go back to the old days with Stanford and son. It's the big wood. <laughs> huh? You was thinking it too. But the thing is, keep in mind now, these guys were not even going to be able to testify in a court of law of what they seen That's right. legally. But yet that's who God chose. See, God doesn't choose who we think he should choose. God doesn't choose who society thinks he should choose. God chooses who he wants to choose to accomplish his goal that he has today, and he wants to bring peace to the world. See, the peace of Christ is for everyone. <laughs> the Christmas story of hope, peace, joy, love that arrived with the birth of Christ 2,022 years ago is for everyone, everywhere. Somehow in the American culture and society, we've got to the point that Jesus is only for us. It's not for us. It's for everyone. He brings something to the table that no other human being, no other God has ever been able to bring to the table, and that is a perfect peace. I would imagine, like I said, that first response was an absolute terror. You can be over-spiritual if you would like, and we'll let you do that, but... Fearful because of the glory that shined about them in the dead of night. But the first words the angel spoke was, don't be afraid. Here's why. The angel says, I bring you good news. The word gospel means good news. I bring you good news that nobody else can ever bring you. And I bring that to you today, that Jesus Christ is born. Now, we talk a lot about, and we focus a lot on Easter. And we need to, don't get me wrong, but we need to focus on this morning or this coming Christmas morning. Because if you take away the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, you take away the ability to have salvation by grace. Because without a virgin born son of God, he couldn't have gone to the cross. The greatest gift ever given today was the peace of Jesus Christ, knowing that we can have eternal life with him. Now understand something today. Because we have got this notion that peace is the absence of conflict. I got news for you. There can be peace and there still can be a bunch of conflict going on. 
you can have peace today and still be in the middle of turmoil. Yes. Yes. Just go to a family Christmas dinner. <laughs> you can feel great, but there's still all the other stuff going on. It's the same way in our society today. We can be sitting here going, I've got the peace of God. And praise the Lord, look at what he's doing in my life. And everywhere around us, chaos. But see, understand, peace is not the absence of conflict. It's the presence of God. I think back to Job. I mean, the man had a really bad day. But even in the middle of losing everything, <coughs> even in the middle of the statement that in Job chapter 3, and yet trouble came, yes. Yes. Job says, I've got peace that God's going to do what God said he was going to do. God's going to take care of what God's going to take care of. And what God doesn't take care of doesn't need to be worried about anyways. Psalms chapter 23, verse number 4 says, Even when I walk through the darkness of the valley, I will not be afraid. For the, clo the close beside me, your rod and your staff, protect me from the NLT. Now think about this. This is a passage of scripture that we use continuously when we do funerals as pastors. But he's telling me that even when I'm walking through the worst nightmare of my life, I can still have peace. Even when everybody else is against me, I can still have peace. Even when the world seems to be exploding or imploding, whichever one you want to call it, I can still have peace. Why? Because he walks with me. Jesus Christ walks beside me. Every step of the way. And the pastor talked a couple of weeks ago about David's rod, the staff that he carried, the shepherd's staff. I may have my staff and the devil may be fearful, but Jesus has got his staff. And guess what? It's bigger than any staff that any devil wants to take on. Yes. And it's got notches in it from where he's defeated the devil every time he raised his head. Why? Because he's bringing peace. Yes. He's bringing me peace. Amen. That first Christmas morning, the angels bring good, good news. The angels, the word there is um, used as messenger, envoy, one who is sent, an angel or an ambassador. What's really interesting about it is that the angels are really no different than we are. No, not, I'm not an angelic being. I'm sorry for if you're disappointed. But we're no different than we are. We are an ambassador. We are the messenger. We take the message of God just like an ambassador does for the government. He has no opinion other than what the President of the United States says. I have no opinion today other than what my King says, and that is Jesus Christ is alive and well, sitting on the right hand of the Father, bringing peace to mankind. And it doesn't get much better than that kind of peace. He says a child has been born in the city of David. He will be a better king who will rule and bring peace. Luke is borrowing from Isaiah there. And he's telling them, <coughs> peace is coming. Not necessarily the peace that you are looking for. But peace is coming. A perfect peace that bypasses all human wisdom. See, now, 
the angel says peace is coming, and Isaiah is referring to it there as well, they were looking for the good old days. They were looking for a day when a king would walk into the temple of Jerusalem, sit down on the throne, declare himself king of kings of Jerusalem, overthrow by violence if necessary the Roman occupation, anybody else that wanted to argue with him, that he would overthrow them and he would establish the reigns of King David again in an empire. That's what they were looking for. Unfortunately, that is what the Jews are still looking for. However, God has a different plan to bring peace to mankind. He says, I'm not going to use a king to overthrow a government and just set up an established kingdom. Now, here's the interesting thing about this is, if you trace the lineage of both Mary, Jesus' biological mother, and the lineage of Joseph, Jesus' stepfather, you trace the lineage, it, both of them go back to David. He was the only rightful heir to that throne at that moment. By both his mother, biological, stepfather, and God. No other human being has had that lineage that he could have literally done what they wanted him to do. But yet they rejected him. They refused the peace that he brought because they had an expectation of what they wanted. Sometimes today we miss out on peace because we have an expectation and we miss out on what God has planned that gives us perfect peace. They wanted it better than it was before. <coughs> Understand, peace doesn't come from a mortal man, but from the God from above. As soon as the announcement is made, Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 14, and suddenly there appeared with them angels and a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth <coughs> peace among men think about it I'm getting serenaded now now, remember, I've already had my heart attack because they showed up. But now, I've got a choir of angels singing the praises of my God. And i be honest with you, I don't know how anybody else missed this. If they were in the fields outside of Bethlehem, how did Bethlehem miss it? How did Jerusalem miss it? If these folks showed up, I don't know, and I can't explain it. Those are one of those questions we'll ask when we get to heaven. But you know what the reality is? is there was this peace. They were no longer fearful. They were excited. Why? Because they had an encounter with God. See, peace does not come from relationships and circumstances, circumstances around us. Great peace always comes from a personal relationship with God. C.S. Lewis wrote, God cannot give us a happiness and a peace apart from himself because it is not there. There is no such thing. Nobody is going to have peace outside of Christ. 
You may have comfort, you may have joy, you may have some other things going on in your life, but you are not going to have a perfect peace that will allow you to walk through life knowing that you're going to spend eternity with him the rest of your life. <coughs> Excuse me. The first thing that they had to have was a personal encounter with Christ. Watchman Nee, who was a Chinese pastor and a martyr who spent 15 years in a Chinese communist prison camp and died there. He died there just one month prior to his release date. But in all of his writings that are available online free of charge and they're great to read. In all of his writings, he never once criticized the Communist Party. His peace was not in the fact that he was rebellious, angry, hateful, or anything like that. His peace was in the fact that he had a personal relationship with Christ. He knew who he was in Jesus. He wrote this, a born-again person ought to possess an unspeakable peace in the Spirit. Do you have an unspeakable peace? Think about it. I mean, sorry when I say that, but he, put your, wrap your mind around this. That we can have peace that is so overwhelming that nothing else matters. When we look around, nothing else going on. Nobody can take that away from us. Peace comes with an upper room experience. Understand the peace that flooded the upper room 33 years later. When another great promise was filled. This time spoken by Christ himself. When he says, and I will send a helper or a comforter. In John chapter 14, verse number 16. And then he fulfilled it in Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit floods that upper room. Imagine the overwhelming peace. I remember the day that Marshall Avenue Assembly of God. And keep in mind, my background was I was raised in a Baptist that did not go anywhere near the Holy Ghost. Not in that sense of the word anyways. I remember kneeling down, people praying with me and encouraging me. And I remember the peace that was overwhelming that night. As the Holy Spirit showed up. An overwhelming peace. If you haven't experienced that peace. Oh, you can have peace with just Jesus, yes. But the overwhelming peace with that power and the anointing and the presence of God walking through your life with the Holy Ghost leading it, guess what? That's peace. Some of you don't have peace today because you haven't had a Holy Ghost encounter yet. Oh, you're saved. You're going to heaven. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. But you have not got the rest of the promise. Jesus was the promise. But he says, I got more for you. Yes, yes. Jesus was the beginning. The Holy Spirit is the encounter. Without Jesus, we can't go to heaven. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't have, can't have all of the gifts. Then we need to have a per personal encounter. Daily. In our prayer and Bible reading. Philippians chapter 4, 4 and 7 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all people. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything but everything. Prayer and by pleading with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. I know Jesus as Savior. I've met the Holy Spirit and He has indwelled me in doing what He needs to do in my life. But I need to daily, daily 
That's hard to do sometimes. But daily, in my prayer and my Bible reading, I need to encounter God. So I need to encounter Him at the cross. I need to encounter Him, the Holy Spirit, at the upper room. And I need to encounter them both daily. So that I can continue to have the peace. <coughs> Pastor Webb is notorious for a famous statement around here. He probably hates when we do this to him. Share your story, share it often. If I've heard him say that one time, I've heard it a thousand times since I've been here. But the reality is, that's what the shepherds did. They went to Bethlehem. They're dirty. They're tired. They're... Mary was probably like, really, gee, God... But they came, and they came worshiping. They were looking for something. They were looking for the Prince of Peace. They had more faith than Herod had. They had more faith than the Pharisees had. Because they were looking for something. They didn't maybe all understand all of the prophetic and things like that. But I'm sure that they were reading their scrolls at different times when they were out in the... This was not a new phenomenon to them. Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 2. And the Bible says that they went and they saw the baby Jesus in the manger where he was promised. (coughs) After the shepherds went and saw Jesus, they left and they told everybody they encountered about who they encountered. The course of the famous Christmas song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. And no, I'm not going to try to sing it for you because past, I don't want Pastor to come out here and get me in tr- throw me off the stage. But it says this, Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. Where are you willing to tell it today? Where are you willing to go today? Where are you willing to go this Christmas season? Where are you willing to tell it? Where are you willing to share the promise of peace that you have? Even in the middle of all of the talk about politics, even in all the talk about how much money we've lost in our 401ks, all of the different chaos that is going on, where are you willing to talk about peace? See, peace isn't going to come with those conversations. But peace is going to come when we start talking about Jesus. Now, there's going to be people that aren't going to want to hear it, and I understand that. But guess what? We can still talk about it. It's about my peace. It's about my relationship. It's about my encounter every day. That's my story. I met Jesus at the age of eight years old at the Flint Baptist Temple on the second row. I met the Holy Spirit at Marshall Avenue Assembly of God. And I meet Him every day when I sit down and I read and I study the Scripture. Now, I I admit that I have the advantage because I get to do that and get paid for it and things like that because it's a part of my job at the hospital. But even if I didn't, I still have an obligation to go into the Word 
and to learn it and to share it and to believe that Jesus Christ is fulfilling every promise today that he promised you. He's got a promise for you. First promise he has for you today is if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, guess what? He's got a promise that you can do it today. It's, an in, it's, not, it's a non-discussion. Well, I'm not sure if he can do that. Guys, I've been around people a lot worse than you are. You know, you, God can do it. If he could save Paul, he can save you. But then some of you are sitting here today and you're looking for peace. And it may be that you know Jesus, you're going to heaven. But you've never had a Holy Ghost encounter. You don't have the peace of knowing that he is working daily in your life. Maybe some of you just need peace. Maybe life is just stressing you out. Maybe, maybe you're here today and you're struggling through something in life that nobody knows about. We need to pray for you. We need to pray with you. We've got people in this church that know how to pray. I'd like everybody to stand. Do my old Baptist thing. See, if you're standing, it's easier for you to move. Right. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, we just pray for peace. Lord, we pray for your peace to overwhelmingly flood this room. Lord, we pray for your anointing to overwhelmingly work throughout hearts and minds. And Lord, I just pray as we, the prayer warriors come and Lord, that right now, if there's somebody here that needs to know you as Savior, they need that peace of salvation experience, Lord, that you would let them come. Lord, if there's somebody here that needs that Holy Spirit moving in their lives and their hearts, they would come. And Lord, let us solve today the questions of life so that peace overwhelms and floods their hearts and their minds. If you need today, if you need prayer for anything, please come. We're going to pray with you, pray for you, believing that God is going to do something miraculous in each individual life. Amen. We are going to dismiss this morning, reminding everybody that lunch is going on back in the back. And we want you to join us and um, hang out, have some fellowship, have some food. Um, I did cheat, did go back and look to see what was going on. And um, I got to say, we got the best cooks in town, but Amen. I'm partially. But join us but if you need prayer come let these prayer warriors pray with you and be encouraged that God has peace today for you every one of us we love you thank you